In a previous video, I talked all about the history and new lore behind Dr. Oddfellow leading up to his in-park debut at Halloween Horror Nights 32. And at the end of that video, I said I'd make another update when we saw him at the event, what we would learn from his Twisted Origins icon house and all the scare zones that he was featured in. But I didn't think I'd come out with more questions. See, I just plan to make this video about what we learned at the event, but I realized just how important Oddfellow is to Halloween Horror Nights and to a possible story they could be building for the future. So today, we're not only going to look into Oddfellow as he exists at this year's event and create another sort of part two to that original Oddfellow history video, but also look into the possibilities, my theories as to what maybe could happen with him in the future. If it wasn't clear already, these are just wild theories, I wouldn't even say speculation just my ideas as to what I'd like to see and what I think we could see pertaining to Oddfellow's future at Halloween Horror Nights. Because, spoiler alert, I don't think this is the last we're going to see of him. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's take it right back to where we left off in that last video just moments before HHN 32 began. So where to start with Dr. Oddfellow this year? I guess the best place to start is talking about his look, because this is something we weren't really sure about before the event started. Upon entering Halloween Horror Nights 32, we of course got a new different look for him than what we previously expected. Lots more frills in his costume, including a slight redesign to his coat and cane, both of which hold some significance in his battle with Jack the Clown. Although I should be clear, this is not the original Ringmaster coat that Jack ends up stealing, this is a brand new one. And as far as looks go, we also did get a more defined look of his pre-Doctor Oddfellow days in Jungle of Doom. We also learned with some new narration added like a couple weeks ago that this is is the origin of Oddfellow's quest for immortality and power to be the most powerful being in this universe or any other one. So this is really where Oddfellow's story begins. And with this narration, I guess it makes it a little clear that all the scare zones do tie into different time periods in Dr. Oddfellow's life. We already kind of knew that, but this really kind of puts a bow on that and confirms that for us, that we are traveling through the story of Dr. Oddfellow as we traverse through the scare zones. We also got a look at Erlo Wolf, his vampire alter ego that he took during the 1960s in the Vamp 69 Summer of Blood scare zone. I love how he's wearing both an outfit that resembles that worn by Jimi Hendrix, but also has got a little bit of a Ringmaster vibe to it. Of course, to pay homage to his past life as the owner of a carnival. Now, Shipyard 32 provides a point of contention amongst fans as to who Oddfellow is in this scare zone, because Oddfellow is appearing in all the different scare zones in a different form. But for my money, I believe that this werewolf character is the version of Oddfellow in this scare zone, just due to the cuts on his face and the fact that he seems like the only monster unique to this scare zone. He isn't a character from past years, he is exclusive to Shipyard 32 which makes me think this is Oddfellow's form in this scare zone. And we can assume that like his appearance in Vamp, he's kind of joining the chaos of the scare zone to hide within it, to sort of release the monsters and remain incognito the whole time. As far as Dark Zodiac goes, it's said that the scare zone takes place after Jack kills him in 2007, as he's transported there in sort of a limbo state. But like Shipyard, it looks like there hasn't really been a confirmed Oddfellow, but sound off in the comments if I'm missing him in this scare zone, I just really haven't picked him out. While scare zone appearances aren't super consequential, I think it's good to visualize some of the backstory we learned before the event began. That being said though, let's jump over to Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins, his icon house, and here we got lots of little nuggets and easter eggs and lore that I really want to talk about. For one, the backstory of this house specifically has become a bit clearer as we've been able to go through it. Essentially, Dr. Oddfellow's Grand Circus and Exposition, which may or may not be linked with his Carnival of Thrills, hosts these pretty mediocre daytime shows with the real action happening at night. So Dr. Oddfellow, being the little trickster that he is, invites you to the nighttime show. The facade brings you to the back of the carnival, where you see all kinds of props including wanted posters for Jack Schmidt, as well as Dorothy Richmond, who may be Chance as she also has a tie back to Oddfellow. As you go in, you essentially go into the carnival through backstage areas, so you see the exhibition of the striking acts of distortion, you go through a makeup room, and then shuffle through some tight corridors with heavy fabric as scares come from each side. 
we see that the Zodiac distortion that was mentioned in the lead up to the event is brought to life as Oddfellow is creating these animal-human hybrids to emulate the Zodiac signs. However, most important for this video and Oddfellow lore is that within this house, in a very brief moment projected through shadows on the wall, we see Oddfellow kill Jack and stuff him into his box, which is also a prop within this house. The moment that is so important to not only the lore of Dr. Oddfellow, but Jack the Clown is brought to life in this house, and I think that's the biggest takeaway from the Twisted Origins Haunted House. We didn't get any crazy twists or really shocking new details, but this entire house gives us a visual, a representation of this important moment, the moment in which Jack dies and Oddfellow becomes a mortal. This is the epitome of an origin story haunted house, and I think they nailed getting the grungy atmosphere and spooky tone for this setting that they really, really needed. Other than that, we didn't learn a whole, whole lot. Not a lot of shocking revelations here, but ever since going to the event and seeing Oddfellow in the flesh, my mind has been racing with questions and theories about how his story is going to continue, because honestly, I don't think he's a one and done this year. For one, Dr. Oddfellow is a character that's made by his presence, a presence characterized by him being a live, mic'd up character. You can talk to him in the front scare zone, ask him questions, get those interactions in an almost Jack or Chance sort of way. He's a very personable guy no matter how twisted he is, so why would they put that much effort in if this was his only year having some kind of role at the event? Also, that being said, he is really popular. A lot of it has to do with that interactive element, but he's very charismatic in a way, I'd argue, unlike any of the other icons that we've seen before. He doesn't feel like he's trying to be the next Jack or the next director or caretaker, he's got his own vibe that feels super fleshed out even though this is his first time appearing at the event. Plus, this is quite possibly the most original lore-heavy year we've had this decade, and considering Oddfellow's connection to greater HHN lore, especially to Jack the Clown, aka the Icon of Icons, this lore has to be building to something. I just don't see any reason for Universal to take all of these factors, take this great character, and just never revisit him again. So long story short, I absolutely think he's coming back, but how? Now here's where we truly start theorizing, and even though there have been some interesting things said by Oddfellow himself, I'm not taking anything that he says in the front scare zone as official canon unless Universal says so, so we're just going to operate with a clean slate. So here's the big question, how does Dr. Oddfellow fit into a world of established icons, especially when the main icon of the group is his worst enemy who doesn't know he's alive? Well, the first option, and least likely, is that he just assimilates with the other icons into Fierce Lantern. Like I said, this is truly the least likely option just because of Oddfellow's self-serving attitude. He also doesn't really seem like someone who'd want to serve under a higher power, aka fear, especially if he's been spending his whole life trying to gather extreme power for himself. Plus, I don't see any world in which Oddfellow and Jack get along. Part of the appeal of this story is the rivalry between the two, so having them be lantern buddies just seems like it invalidates all of this buildup. I don't want to rule out the idea of Oddfellow hanging out with all the other icons because you'd never know what could happen, but I think it's very, very unlikely. Moving though from the least likely to the most likely, Jack gets word of Dr. Oddfellow's return and they reunite for the rematch of the decade. It's been over 15 years since Jack and Oddfellow have seen each other, and since then, Jack has really taken over as the leader of the Icons. All things considered, Oddfellow isn't going to take this lightly, and I could see the next anniversary year focusing on the battle between the two of them. Granted, it is like a losing battle because they both have immortal blood, but I think it can make for a really great progression to the story. I think this is most likely just because of the timing of bringing back Oddfellow right now. A lot of Oddfellow's story this year has been dedicated to his relationship with Jack the Clown. I could see this being the origin, the stepping stone to building this story up so that when Jack comes back, he has a worthy adversary. As far as the other icons go, I think they could either create a two-sided battle in which some icons join Jack and some join Oddfellow, I think that could be really interesting, or they could kind of just sit on the sidelines and watch the chaos unfold because they are all, you know, 
obsessed with Carnage. Again, I think this is pretty likely. They've been really nailing the versus house format with Legends Collide last year and Dueling Dragons this year, so that could be a really cool way to execute Oddfellow v Jack House. Again, I'm not saying this is actually happening, but I think it would be really cool. I think it could be something they're setting up. That's just me though. However, there's one more potential option that I personally would really want, but I don't think they go for this completely. However, I could see certain aspects of this slipping into whatever they do with Oddfellow. And that is Oddfellow versus Fear, aka all the icons versus Oddfellow. Oddfellow is someone who seems like he doesn't like to waste times with petty brawls. He's after immortality, big stuff, ultimate power, and Fear's Lantern could be the next source of power for him. It not only is a very powerful artifact, but it would also give him power over Jack, his main enemy. Realistically, Oddfellow is ridiculously powerful, and it seems like Fear is the only being that's at a similar level to him. I mean, Bro literally took over the entire Zodiac dimension. He's got a lot going on. I think this could be a great way to reintroduce Fear, maybe with a redesign or a new spin. I know he's not the most popular icon, so maybe this can kind of bring him back, given the pumpkin lore treatment where he's a kind of a little bit of a different vibe, but still the Fear we know and love. It could take a similar approach like Oddvilla vs. Jack, but I envision it being bigger, bloodier, and almost like a Horror Night spin on something like Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. The only thing I think holding this back would be the canon implications, because a lot of fans wouldn't really be all about their favorite icons getting, you know, killed off. But that's pretty minor, it, canon isn't really a big deal with Halloween Hornets, it's been rewritten before, and I don't see, let's say if Oddfellow kills the caretaker, I don't see where that caretaker is just going to go away forever. So I could see part of this happening maybe with fear being involved, but I think it's kind of in the middle as far as likelihood goes. And that's really all I have for this video. This video is kind of a little bit of everything. I wanted to do an update on Oddfellow and like the lore because I did promise it at the end of that original video, but there isn't that much to talk about. It's really just kind of the looks that we got from this year's event, which are still pretty interesting. But I've been hearing a lot of discourse amongst the fans as to what's going to happen with Oddfellow, what are sort of the ties, and maybe once we get some more information later on, I could do an update to this video and expand more on one of these theories. Regardless if any or none of these ideas actually happen, I'm still super excited to see what Halloween Horror Nights does with Dr. Oddfellow. I think he's such a great character. I think he might be my new favorite icon? I don't know, it's hard to say, but I really, really do love Oddfellow as a character, and I love how he's been integrated into this year's event with all the lore. But I just kind of wanted to throw these theories out there and see what you all think. Let me know in the comments, what do you think is the future for Dr. Oddfellow? Do you think he's gonna come back? Do you think he's done? I don't personally think he's done, but maybe there's an argument to be made that Oddfellow might just go away after this year. Let me know all your thoughts about Dr. Oddfellow and the future of Halloween Horror Nights in the comments below. Of course, if you like this video and love more Halloween Horror Nights and theme park deep dives, history, lore videos, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And before I go, I want to take this last little bit of the video to get a shout out to a really cool Minecraft Haunt charity event happening between October 7th and November 5th called Minecraft Monster Mayhem. The talented creatives behind this event have made 800 houses and six scare zones, blending original stories with awesome IPs like Halloween, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Silent Hill. And let me tell you, as someone who appreciates haunted house design and little details, there is so much care that went into the offerings for this event, so it's definitely worth checking out if you like things like Halloween Horror Nights, Hell of Scream, Not Scary Farm, anything like that, it's worth your time. And like I said, this is a charity event with a drive benefiting the Zebra Coalition, which is an organization aiding LGBTQ plus youth ages 13 to 24 facing isolation and homelessness. If you want to learn more, I'm going to leave the Minecraft Monster Mayhem Discord as well as their other social medias down below. You're going to want to go on that Discord if you're at all interested in this event. And I just urge you to go check it out if you have any additional questions or just want to attend the event itself beginning again next Saturday, October 7th. And that's all I got. I want to thank you all for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one, which is probably going to be an in-park video, maybe, maybe another deep dive. Who knows? We'll see. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and take care, everybody.